Evening folks, old Buster coming to you again. Got another story. This is called Pheromones and Perfume. Y'all might remember something might have been said about that when them boys on that trip, so this kind of goes along with it. Some of these things you have to kind of put together how these boys all got going and doing different things, but some of it kind of falls into place, so might have a little bit out of sequence, as they say, to some folks' notion, but we'll try to get it all together for you best we can. Pheromones perfume. Melvin hollered at Walter and asked him what the heck was that awful smell. He said he'd gag a gopher. Well, Lenny was with Melvin when they come into the barn to see what was going on with the boys. Well, Mr. Hollander had built a new barn and had a real nice storage room that the boys was using for this experiment of whooping up a batch of uh, Jesse's new perfume. You see, Jesse done some experimenting at the labs there at the University of Alabama with some of his chemistry friends, and the test come out to show them pheromones of Jesse's was real and a working overtime. Well, Jesse got tested, and then he went to mixing up a mishmash of concoctions to make the perfume he had got the idea of making. It was found that Jesse's apocrine, now folks don't get me to lie about all this, this is true stuff, a-P-O-C-R-I-N-E. Well, old glands has produced more than a normal feller, and that's why them gals went plum Google-eyed and bonkers over Jesse. Of course, Jesse was a real nice feller and right handsome too, and that helped, I'd say. Now, Buster said he was old, but <laughs> right pretty too, but might want his and pheromones cranked up a bit if a nay wasn't working that good. Now, old Lenny was a bit of a cowboy, but a better motorcycle mechanic. He knowed some stuff as Walter said. Lenny come by with Melvin to took over them new Harleys Elvis done give the boys. He was right interested in that Screaming Eagle package that was on them. It made them pretty near fast as grease lightning. Now the lab test at the University of Alabama showed the presence of the nasal organ, VNO. Now this stuff's true stuff so I don't know how to say all this fancy stuff. The VNO inside the nose picks up signals sent by the pheromones secreted by those uh, apocrine glands around the genitals and then the armpits. Once the message is received by the VNO, it's passed on to the limbic part inside the brain. Now this is scientific stuff that I did some reading on about Jesse's pheromones. That's how come it's in here. Now, the limbic portion is responsible for all basic human sensations, including uh, attraction from one sex to another. Although the person may not smell them in the traditional sense, they increase the attraction. Heck of a note. Who'd know a feller even had that stuff? In fact, sensing the human pheromones uh, occurs well below the level of human consciousness. Signals that pheromones are being released are subconsciously picked up and then sent to the hypothalamus region of the brain. Now, most of the time, humans are not even aware that pheromones are being released. Now, that might be a good thing, I don't know. But men and women both have them pheromones. But in each gender, they're different. And there are two main chemicals that uh, they have in there called andro hmm, stenone and copulin. It's these two chemicals which the brain processes unconsciously which cause a physiological and behavioral change in others. Well anyhow, that androtestone is the primary phone, uh, pheromone found in men. And uh, I just can't read all that to you. It scares me to think about it. Uh, the luteinizing hormones or LH is as women. And uh, that's what the women have. Well, anyway, well, Jesse and his chemistry friends, there's a whole lot more to that if you want the written thing, and, but I ain't going to get into that. That's, it scares me to think about it. Well, Jesse and his chemistry friends up there at the University of Alabama come up with a synthetic pheromone alcohol solution. And they could use that in, per, uh, in perfume and cologne for men and women. Jesse made a deal with them to give them percentage of the profits that the boys made, if they made any. 
Now you know they have come up with this stuff in later days and uh, back in them days they didn't know why one feller had the gals chasing him more than another. And now we do. Now Jesse had what you call one of them epiphanies. He figured that men and women both needed them pheromones. Of course Jesse didn't and he could make them up some special like for perfume, cologne, deodorant, shampoo, soap, and lotion, all manner of other products. And that was what Jesse and the boys was working on when Melvin and Lenny come in. Now Jesse's chemistry friends got 5% of the profits and they were sure enough happy about that I tell you. If in this here idea Jesse's worked out like his and others, they'd be millionaires in no time flat. Well it took the boys about two weeks to come up with samples using Mr. Factor's products and also putting it into their Little Dove's Wonder Cream and Mother Nature's Gift of Youth. Now Jesse called up Mr. Factor and Nancy and told him to come on over to the house and see what all they done come up with. Well, Jesse said they might be surprised at what all they done done. Now you know when the boys was on their trip, Hired and Walter done made it up that Jesse's going to have his perfume and sent it out to them out there in California. So I guess Jesse had to do something. Well sure enough a couple days later Mr. Factor and Nancy come into town to see what all the boys had done and was plumb excited about it all when they got there. Now Mr. Factor asked the boys if they would come to one of his plants and work with his and fellers to mix up a prop, proper batch like in his and products. The boy said they would and could he and they could be there then on the next morning morning. Well after working to Mr. Factor's fellers they all decided to test it out on a group of folks out in Hollywood that they met at the party that time at Mary Steenburgen's house. Now if y'all remember that story when they was on their trip. Well Nancy called up Asa Wayne, told her to gather up all the folks that had been there and tell them the perfume was ready plus a real big surprise. Wasn't long till they all went out to Hollywood to show all the movie star folks what all they had. The whole line was presented to them and all of them went plumb hornswoggle over that. Gosh a Friday. What all they had and every one of the folks there wanted at least one of everything. That's exactly what they all got too and on the condition of reporting back to Mr. Factor in two weeks. Now it weren't no name on the products, just test sample. Jesse still had a dickens of a time of getting away from Elizabeth Taylor and Mae West again, but Mary and Asa rescued him. <laughs> Them fair bones, I told you. Well, sir, after two weeks was up, and even before that, Nancy and Asa was a fit to be tired of having a cow they had so many calls about them products. They said they didn't even have time to sit down because they was on the phone and answering the door so much. The test samples was an absolute hit. They was a clamoring for more, and at any price. Now Mr. Factor called up the boys with Nancy and Asa on the line and told the boys he had a surprise for them. They was a going to Italy for an unveiling of the line and he wanted all the boys to go along with them. Well now the boys ain't ever been to no Italy so they reckon they'd better go. Well, Mr. Factor said he would have all the different products made up and ready to show and be in production in less than a week after that. Now the boys was all family you know and figured that the whole bunch ought to go along too. So Buster made all arrangements along with Nancy for the four families to take the trip too and make a vacation out of it as well. Well everything the boys had done pretty much come from Jesse's IDs but the boys sure enough had a hand in it too. Now all of them contributed to the projects and all of them shared equal like and no bones about that neither. Wasn't none of them greedy. And all them boys are smart as a whip. You can just believe that. Walter Nunn invented something for the NASA people and a gizmo for the oil refinery compressors. Well, Hire Dunn invented a thing with jig to set huge sewer pipe and drain pipe so it could be done in hours instead of weeks. That's that gizmo he did for his daddy, you know. The puller. Well, Buster come up with a holder for electric GFCI unit so the chicken pluckers wouldn't get electrocuted in the wet conditions he was working in and a holder for his and stuffed strawberries and a bunch of new recipes to boot. Now Hyde brought up the notion of giving Asa a piece of the pie since she helped out so much and the boys all agreed. So the boys, Jesse chemistry friends, and Mr. Factor, Nancy and Asa would all divvy up the pie when all was said and done. Now Mr. Factor and Nancy had their deal and the boys took care of the rest of them. 
Mr. Factor and the boys split 50-50 after cost. The night of the shindig, Nancy got the boys and all the folks all decked out in some sure enough fancy ducks. Now, Carla May and Mary Gale sure was pretty all dressed up like that and lots of folks took them for movie stars. Now, all the ladies and men folk looked right fetching as well. Of course the men folk was a tugging at their collars a mite, but all in all everybody was fine and enjoying the doings. There was a movie premiere and a fashion show on the latest designs and then come the time for the special announcement of the new revolutionary product that turned the fragrance industry upside down. Now Mr. Factor was introduced and he commenced to tell them all about the new product line. Now, Nancy was there with Asa and most of the celebrities know them. Mr. Factor asked the boys to come on up on the stage too as he would have to say a word and word done got round about the new product and clapping began and was about as loud as thunder they say. Finally things settled down a bit and Mr. Factor asked the boys to take hold of the cover that was draped over the products and on the count of three unveil the line. Well the boys done just that and lo and behold their surprise was the name of the line. Mr. Factor heard the boys discussing it once it and after all the haggling heard Buster say why don't they just call it what it was, Attraction. There was the name of the line, Attraction by Max Factor and Friends. Well when the night was over there was enough orders for all the products and that they would uh, be behind the production for over a year. Now, that didn't even count for what all was going to be happening with the general public in the marketplace. This was going to be the high end of Mr. Factor's products but not so high a regular person couldn't buy it. Now, Mr. Factor told the boys and their families this would make it so their money would never be a problem again for them or any of their families, ever. What Mr. Factor didn't know that the boys was already in that position with what they done done, come up with and invested in. It sure would help out the folks that needed it though, like Doc and his and people that were friends of Jesse's that he met over at the University of Alabama, over there in uh, Zambia. It was a heck of a night and all the folks had a grand old time a hard knobbing with the movie stars and rich and important folks. Now Buster always wanted to try his hand at waiting tables and since he had on a monkey suit <laughs> began doing just that. Of course the folks there seen him and knowed who he was so he was visiting more than waiting on them. Now you want a real hum there? Guess who Mr. McBrayer brung over to the shindig? Monique and all her people. Now you remember on the trip, Monique and Jesse Darrell done got up together. Now Jesse didn't need no more pheromones for that gal, I tell you. Jesse wasn't even ditherated by that neither. Fact is, he was sure glad she was there. The boys folks all got together and invited the gals and their folks that the boys was a sporting Alma May and Lou Ann Roberts and their people was there along with all the other brothers and sisters. Now Buster reckoned he was the odd man out in this show, but that wasn't right neither. You see, Lulu was Italian herself and she and her folks come over before the others to visit their family for a bit before the boys got there. So all the boys had them their gals and after the event was over and everybody left on out, the boys and their folks and the gals and their folks took a little tour of Italy. Lulu's people fixed up a heck of a fine homemade meal when all of them went to visit. There was pertin near more of their party than folks in the little town it turned out to be a festival before it was all over with. Seemed like everybody thereabouts come by and ain't nobody ever seen so much food and wine I'm telling you. There was a special invite by the Pope to see his and private gardens in the underground, underwater gardens in the Vatican. Now all the designers in Milan, or Milan however you say it, had him in for a tour and was a trying to make deals with Mr. Factor for private labeling of the products. The boys and their folks even got to meet Giulio Andriotti. The pronouncing ain't too good, but the fellow was the Prime Minister of Italy. Now the families all took a trip to Lake Como and Lake Iseo. A private villa was loaned to Mr. Factor for the boys and their families and the cooking was something to write home about I tell you. Whilst the garment round a picture taken was usual for Jesse Walter and Hired. 
Buster was a visiting and talking to most everybody he see. So time passed by pretty quick. Rome was a hoot for sure, and a driving sightseeing tour was letting all the folks see the real Italy. Lulu's folks took them on a look-see around their part of the country, and they got a taste to, to taste and buy some real good wine. Now, Grandpa Gus and Grandma really liked that being as how they spoke a little of their lingo, and that made it real fun for them. You see, they come from the old country and could speak several languages, so communication weren't no problem. Danged if they didn't stay there during near the whole month till visitors come a calling. <laughs> Well, Mr. Hired Holmes, Dalton, Devane, and Uncle Jeff all come over for a little chat. Reckon the fat's in the fire summers and the boys are about to get on in the middle of it. Well, folks, we got some stories coming up, what the boys doing. Of course, in uh, the story vacation, you'll understand that uh, these folks uh, that they're dealing with happen to be from the government. And so they're going to be telling you something about that. And we're going to be having the cast of characters and one of the stories on how it come about. We appreciate you listening in and have a blessed day. Old Buster signing out.